Hello and thanks for joining us on this edition of Green and Gold Gridiron. I am your host, Brian Groff, and just like Mike McCarthy calls the plays for the Packers, Keith Rorting calls the plays on this show. Wow. Reporter for PackerReport.com. What a big victory for the Green Bay Packers as Mike McCarthy calls the plays. You know, how about that? I think we all speculated that was going to be coming. The game had a quicker tempo. Mm -hmm. There were less checks. You know, Aaron Rodgers, nobody really wants to say anything. Nobody's going to throw anybody under the bus. But they did talk about it being faster. They talked about less changes. I definitely think that's Mike McCarthy's stamp on it. Um, again, maybe with all those rushes as well, the most they've had all season. 42 running plays, 230 rushing yards, and we saw the return of Eddie Lacy. The return of the old Eddie Lacy we've been waiting for. And, you know, the, the trick is it was his third 100-yard game of the year, but he's still had four games of 10 yards or less. So an important bounce back game. I could tell you talking to him after the game, he spoke with as much passion about the game of football as I've ever heard him talk about. And I feel like, you know, people have speculated about his weight, which is a little heavier. They've speculated about lingering injuries. I think it's the passion. I think being sat down in Detroit kind of crystallized things, let him know what was really important, at least at this stage in his life. So it's great to see it. James Starks had a great game too. Most rushing yards since, uh, 04 when uh, Najee Davenport ripped off 178. It's uh, great to see that combination there. We don't always talk a lot about special teams, but there is a connection with Jeff Janis because he was on our show earlier this yeah. year. What a terror on oh special my, teams. Oh, and he was he was jacked up. I mean, he's flying down there. And, you know, I, I don't know, you know, neither of us have the athleticism to worry about that, but to, to time running down full speed and guys are going to have to start cat calling for bear catches or they're, they're going to get their heads ripped off. But Man, oh man, just I, I want to see that athleticism on <laughs> offense, though. It's exciting to see. And following that game, the big news off the field is that they signed Mike Daniels to a contract extension. Uh, originally reported at $42 million, also saw reports that it was $41 million. Mm -hmm. But either way, this man is going to make a lot of money. $22 million guaranteed. He will be the third highest paid at his position across the NFL. Do you think it's worth it? When you say third highest paid, you know, when you know J.J. Watt's in that mix, I mean, J.J. Mm -hmm. Watt to Mike Daniels, there, there's a drop-off to be said. But, but I'll tell you, I feel like Mike Daniels is, is the heart and the, the fire in that defense. And, you know, you, you go back to when he was a draft pick out of Iowa. Teams go to the combine. I think each team gets 20 opportunities to interview different players. So 32 teams times 20 interview opportunities. He had one interview at the combine. Mm -hmm. It was the Packers. He impressed them. He has been better than they ever could have hoped. He's such a fiery guy. He works hard. He's not a guy that's going to let up just because he got a big contract. And we talk about him and his teammates on the field. Are you worried about the rushing yards that the Cowboys accumulated? A little bit. A little bit I am. And, you know, they're going to run into that again this week with Latavius Murray. So, you know, they need to lock that down. But it, at the end of the day, it's what's in the win column. So I like what they're doing. I like the plays they're making. There's always room for improvement, right? Uh, you know, uh, we're really versatile on this show. Uh, many times we have Packers players. We've had former players. Uh, we've really targeted this year on guys from our area who have gone on to play in the NFL, and that's who we have for a special guest in this episode. We're going to bring in Jenny Ritchie and uh, help us introduce who we have as a special guest. Hello, Rich Jenny. Seibert, a Roselleville native who graduated from Marshfield, Columbus, uh, Super Bowl champion. Uh, we have a lot of things on tap we for do. him. We do, we do. You know, he is a local guy. You know, he grew up in the area. So we're going to dig more into his career. We're going to also talk about what he's been doing since then. You know, he does give a lot back to the community. We're going to talk to him about that. And we're also going to get his prediction for the big game this weekend, Giants versus Panthers. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. They have been known to beat. <laughs> yes, they have. They, there is a history there. Uh, also have a fun story that we can share with Rich. Uh, one of his greatest moments in his career came at Lambeau Field as they won an NFC Championship game. I know that it's tough for Packers fans. Uh, you and I were, you and I were both one. at that game. That's not a pleasant memory for us. <laughs> we were there, but it was very pleasant for Rich as he went on to that Super Bowl. So we'll talk about that. We have a lot to talk about with Rich Seibert coming up after this break. You are watching Green and Gold Gridiron. Brought to you in part by Hermaning Financial Group. Hermaning Financial Group strives to help you and your family reach your financial goals while demonstrating their core values of integrity, independence, and innovation. With offices in Wausau, Stevens Point, Manitowoc, and Wisconsin Rapids. Proudly supports Junior Achievement, North Central District. Junior Achievement gives young people the skills they need to own their economic success. Our volunteers help students with financial literacy, work readiness, and entrepreneurship. And it's really helping me understand how it's going to be in the future. Do you like to walk? Do you want to live longer? You will love square dancing. 
friend you meet, you meet for life. Marvelous people. I guess I meet people. I love it. I love it. I love Square Dancing. The fun, the family. Great variety of music. The camaraderie. you young. It's fun. Try it, you like it. Oh, Call 715-544-7969. Visit WisconsinSquareDancing.com for more information. First lesson free, singles and couples welcome. When disaster strikes, water, fire, storm damage, and even mold. We take care of them all, anytime, day or night, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Quality service and customer satisfaction are top priorities. Tell your insurance company you prefer North Star Cleaning and Restoration. And remember, don't just get it clean, get it North Star Clean. NorthstarCleaning.net Welcome back to Green and Gold Gridiron. Brian Groff and Keith Rodink, and it's time for us to introduce our special guest. He is from our area, a Rosellville native, graduated from Marshfield, Columbus, played football at Western Illinois, and had a fantastic career with the New York Giants, winning a Super Bowl. It is our pleasure to introduce Rich Seibert. Rich, thanks so much for joining us. How you doing, Rich? Hey, I'm doing good, guys. Thanks for having me. You know, it's always a pleasure to uh, talk sports to uh, my local community. You know, uh, you really give back to your community. We really want to get into that at some point in this show. Uh, but first off, you've been very busy since you've uh, stopped playing football. Uh, what's it been like being a coach and uh, running around and taking kids to practices and games? Uh, you know, it's awesome. I, I truly enjoy coaching my sons and now my daughter, who's coming up through the ranks uh, in everything they do. Uh, no matter what they enjoy to do, I find a way to uh, be out there and helping them out. But then I also coach uh, at the high school also out here. So uh, during the football season, I'm busy. You know, I got the high school practice. I got my kids' practices. Um, football's over now, thank God. But uh, basketball season, uh, like, like most people know, it goes football, basketball, and then baseball. So nothing ever stops. You just keep on having fun with your kids and uh, just trying to let them compete and play the best of their abilities. Now. When you've played in the NFL for 10 years and you've got that Super Bowl uh, championship ring, that carries a lot of weight. How, do you, uh, how does that play over with your team, and uh, what kind of lessons do you want to pass on based on that? I just pass on hard work. You know, um, I, I was six foot three, 300 pounds, played in the NFL, so I was not the biggest guy. I, was not the, uh, I went to Western Illinois University. I had a great four years there, but I didn't, I didn't go to the Badgers. I didn't go to the Big Ten school. Uh, I had to work. I worked for everything I had, and I just instilled that in these kids. You know, uh, don't let anybody tell them that they're not good enough at doing something, or they're not big enough, they're not strong enough, they're not fast enough. Just do, just do it the best you possibly can, and um, no matter what you do in life, you'll succeed. And I just try to have fun with them. You know, I see some of these parents coaching like they're uh, they're trying to win the Super Bowl when the kids are 10 years old, and I kind of sit back and laugh at them. And maybe after the game, I will uh, I'll chat to them about hey we're not playing the game anymore. You know, it's about the kids. The kids are supposed to have fun. The kids are supposed to be safe and um, just enjoy their lives. Speaking of the Super Bowl, I was looking at some video the other day. After you won the Super Bowl, it had to have been a fantastic moment for you carrying oh, a yeah. son around with the jersey with Cybert on the back. Uh, which son was that and does he have memories of that? Uh, that's my oldest. He is, uh, it's Hunter. So Hunter will be 11 years old on Christmas Eve. So he was, shoot, I can't do the math in my head. It was 2008. <laughs> He's about five years old, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. I don't know if he remembers the game too much. He was sitting with my wife uh, and my parents. Um, I knew he took a nap at halftime, but after the game, <laughs> I wanted to, uh, you know, grab him. And you know, he was the first one that got to come down the field. My parents and my and my in-laws and my sisters and my brother-in-laws, you know, they all got down there. But it all took them a little bit of time to get down the field to. Uh, enjoying the celebration let's we want to talk more about the super bowl rich but let, let's back up to one game before that that's a certainly a memorable game for packer fans it's a game brian and i covered and we're shocked and stunned by the ending but talk about your memories of that that title game at lambeau field packers are 12 point favorites ends up being Favre's last game second coldest game in nfl history to, to the ice bowl i think it, it was a crazy crazy night talk to us about that game it was pretty cool, you know, being a kid growing up in Wisconsin, watching the Packers play at Lambeau Field. You know, I, I had the opportunity to go to a few Packer games when I was a kid growing up. So for me, it was special. I was going back home playing the NFC Championship game against the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field when it's cold. And um, what's, what I remember most is just walking around before the game and uh, the fans were yelling, hey, it's too cold. You better go back to New Jersey. Like, it's not cold in New Jersey. Come on, guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, 
the game was awesome. You know, if you were a Giants fan, obviously if you're a Packer fan, you're still probably thinking about it. And every time I go home, I know some of my family members, you know, they look at me and they're not sure to be happy. Or be, <laughs> but um, that game could have went either way. You know, as far as last game as a Packer, you know, in 1997, when Favre won the Super Bowl, I was a senior in high school. So, um, you know, Favre was somebody that I looked up to when, when I was a kid. And it's somebody that I got to compete against, not for say I was on the offensive line, he was a quarterback, but, you know, my team got to compete against his team in the, um, the highest level possible. So uh, that game was probably the most memorable game I played besides the Super Bowl in my, in my career. Um, you know, I don't know. You guys know, you guys know everything about it like I do, but it was cold. It's at Lambeau. I'm playing in front of a bunch of family and friends that, that got tickets for that game. Um, it was special. It was a special night. And, um, you know, winning that game at Lambeau in overtime, it kind of sparked us for that uh, next game. Yeah, it was a it was a crazy game to be sure. You know, Plasco Burris had that big game. Uh, you guys did a great job protecting Eli. You ran the ball. All things that uh, I think Green Bay wasn't expecting. Everybody talks about the Favre interception at the end, but right. the Packers only rushed for 28 yards that game. Burris yeah. had a great game against Al Harris, and, and of course the, you know the the kicks at the end, and and yeah, that that of course led you to to the undefeated Patriots. Rich, I got to tell you, what stands out for me is obviously I'm covering the Packers that night. So I run down to the locker room, I get interviews, I go back to the satellite truck, we send them back to the TV station. I go back in and I think, you know what? A guy from our area is going to the Super Bowl. So Rachel Nichols and I from ESPN are going through the hallways all the way into the Giants locker room. I walk in, have no idea where you and your teammates are. I come around the corner, I come up to you, and, and you won't remember this, but I definitely do. I introduce myself and you say to me, I've been in the league seven years and this is the first time you want to talk to me. <laughs> you know, I was just jo I was probably joking. I was, uh, <laughs> that's the way I was. You know, if, if you were with Rachel, uh, obviously they must have been a joke. You know, Rachel followed us quite often. And yeah. uh, I, I remember her pretty well from being in our locker rooms and, and talking all the time about football. But uh, that was just me being myself, you know. Um, Coming from a small town in Roselleville, I know I'm from uh, Roselle, but I went to school at Marshall Columbus. Um, you kind of, you know, don't get looked at, but uh, that's not why I played the game. I played the game because I loved it. You know, I, I, uh, I understand that I went to New York and played for the Giants, and I'm from Wisconsin. And being from Wisconsin, how can you not be a Packer fan? Because, yeah. you know, it, 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 it is pretty cool going back home and seeing everybody enjoy football. And uh, I didn't choose where I played. You know, I, I'm glad I, I played for New York. Um, I had a great time out here. You know, I still live out, I live out east, and, uh, uh, you know, the Packers are the Packers. You know, it's something special about when, when you do go to Wisconsin and everybody gets behind their bandwagon and cheers for them. I tell you what, uh, you said that you would do the interview, and then you asked how you looked, and I fixed your tie. I remember that, too, and then we did interviews. But that led you on to the Super Bowl, and I know you've been quoted as saying that the, your favorite play was the kneel down at the end, but that David Tyree catch oh, man, this had to have been against right up the there. helmet. Uh, yeah, you know, they ran a TT game, so Sean and I at Center O'Hara, uh, we got kind of picked on a little uh, a little stunt, uh, and thus the helmet grab. So Sean and I always joke if if we didn't get beat, that play never would have happened. Who knows if we ever would have won? So everybody talks about Eli and Tyree, but you know, Sean and I kind of got picked on a little stunt. You know, I think it was Seymour and um, I forget who the nose guard was. I, I shouldn't forget those guys, but, uh, well, you know, they beat us on that play. But Eli made a, uh, a heck of a play and Tyree caught the ball in his helmet. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, that, yeah. you know, that catch, too, it's funny that now the, what's talked about as being perhaps the greatest catch of all time, Odell Beckham Jr., another giant, going up against Tyree. I guess what's, what's, your, what's your take on that to the, to the most famous catches in NFL history, both giants? You got a, you got a preference? Well, obviously, I think uh, the catch that was in the Super Bowl takes a uh, I agree, I agree. Over the regular season. So, you know, um, Odell, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, I, I have two boys that love football, and they both love Odell. And I can say that the times we've been down there in the field or at practice, you know, Odell's been a class act on and off the field. And, you know, he makes time to come over and shake kids' hands and sign jerseys. And, uh, you know, uh, he's a pretty special player. He's fun to watch. I know I enjoy watching them. I know um, my boys and all their friends enjoy watching Odell. So, uh, but Tyree, you know, that moment, that time, um, the fourth quarter, final drive, it's it's got to go to Tyree in the catch. Yeah. You talked about coming out of Marshfield, Columbus, and Western Illinois, not being drafted. 
Do you find parallels with that Super Bowl run, being the underdog all the way through, going on the road, being the wild card, and going through as underdogs in the Super Bowl and winning that game? I love being the underdog. I think it's uh, it's easier being the underdog than being the guy on top. You know, um, in my career, uh, that next year, you know, we were on top of the world and uh, we won the NFC outright, and uh, we had home field advantage the route, and you know, we lost to Philadelphia in the playoffs at home. So, um, I think being the underdog makes it easy you have nothing to lose you can go out there and play your hardest and and not worry about what happens you know I think going into this Super Bowl uh, we believed in ourselves but nobody else did you know uh, it's obvious nobody picked us nobody um, thought we could beat New England and but those 53 guys and the uh, how many coaches we have and our owners and our families you know they believed and we played for each other and we, 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 found, we found a way to win and um, we always look back at uh, we played New England the second to last week of the season we played them tough. We should, we should have beat them. In my mind, we, we had them on the ropes. We scored a bunch of points. They scored a couple more points than we did. But um, I'm, looking back, I'm kind of glad we lost. If we would have beat them, they probably would have got us in, you know, in the game that mattered. So um, that's the way the NFL goes. It's hard to beat a good team twice. And uh, whoever's hot at the end of the year, you know, um, these teams that are left now, watch out. Whoever gets hot right now can uh, make a run for it and, and, and get it done. There's a team right now that's really hot in the NFL, and your former team is going to play them this weekend, uh, the Panthers undefeated. Uh, we're going to have some questions for you. We're going to bring in Jenny after the break. We'll have our Titletown topics. Our special guest this week, Rich Seibert, former NFL offensive lineman for the New York Giants. Stick around. We have much more to come after this. Looking for a high-impact way for your business to stand out from the rest? Flipside Graphics specializes in vehicle wraps, vinyl graphics, and much more. Cutting edge graphics with professional results is what we stand for. Have a large fleet that needs to be flipped or shirts to be embroidered? Our design team will handle every aspect of the project from start to finish. We design it, we wrap it, we flip it. Call Flipside Graphics today and stand out from the competition. Things break all the time and glue never works. What you need is Laser Bond USA, the amazing liquid plastic that fixes virtually anything in as little as three seconds. Laser Bond is not a glue, but a unique liquid plastic that only hardens with the UV light. Now fill in plumbing leaks in three seconds or less. Instantly repair kids' toys and keep playtime flying. The magic? A powerful liquid plastic that hardens under ultraviolet light. The best part? The adhesive is made in the USA. Wow, that is fast. It bends, it's flexible. If you mess up applying, just wipe clean. No sticky residue. Call now to get LaserBond USA for just $19.99 and receive this protective carry case free. But wait, we're going to double the offer absolutely free and ship your order free. Call now. Call 1-800-504-3045 to get your LaserBond USA. Call now or go to LaserBondUSA.com. So call 1-800-504-3045. Call now. Welcome back to Green and Gold Gridiron. At this point in the show, we normally have our title town topics. Maybe we yes. can call them the Meadowlands topics. For Rich Seibert, our special guest, Jenny, what do you have for him? Oh, we got a couple of things. So, you know, we talked a little, we touched a little bit on how you um, you had come back last month about Thanksgiving, I believe you said, you know, to go to Marshville, Columbus. You had the um, the gold football. Solid. The NFL is honoring every Super Bowl champion, and they're giving a golden football to your high school where you came from to honor the high schools that basically grew us into the players we were. Awesome. So with, with coming back, I'm sure you got to meet a lot of those kids. You've talked about your kids quite a bit. So do you see yourself as kind of a role model for those kids in smaller towns that are, are looking toward maybe doing something professional in football but aren't sure if they're going to be able to? Uh, I just try to be a good person. You know, I just try to be myself. My parents raised me. You know, when I was a kid growing up, I had Mrs. Varshow as my sixth grade teacher and my eighth grade teacher and Gary Barshall was her son so I followed Gary Barshall he's from Auburndale he played for the um the Pirates the Cubs I think he Oscar still manages kids. right so coach Phillies when I was a kid that's who I looked up to I looked up to a local kid that played professionally in a sport and I said you know that's pretty cool maybe I can do that someday and uh you know if I can get a couple kids to believe in themselves and to work hard and um you know th th that's all that matters and you know I, I do my football camp I do my uh, charity trap shoot and uh, people say, oh, what do you like doing better? I love working with the kids. You know, I have kids. You, you two guys have kids. Um, it's, uh, it's fun when, when they're smiling and they're out there and competing and having fun. 
and you scrimmaged against some of the current players. So how's your jump shot? Are you more of a low post guy, back to the basket? Yes, it was, um, it was the alumni versus the current team in a scrimmage. And um, I believe I was two for three downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I think I only attempted one layup, and I made it, obviously. Uh, a couple rebounds. Uh, I didn't play much. My legs don't let me run that well anymore. So, um, But it was fun. It was, it was cool to get the old, uh, the old crew back together. You know, some old guys, some young guys, and um, the gym was packed. I think it was a great thing for our high school, and uh, it, it was actually a pretty fun time playing basketball again. Awesome. And, I mean, you, you just brought up you have a celebrity trap, so you do that's in Eau Claire. So why don't you tell us about that? And then, you know, it's very important to you, obviously, to do community events. So what, why is that so important? You know, why, what is the importance of getting back to the communities that you're from? It's just something easy to do for us. You know, uh, the, the celebrity trap shoot I set up for cardiac research was, was to honor my grandmother, who received a heart transplant in 1987, and basically it gave me an extra, you know, 20 years to know my grandma. You know, I was eight or nine years old when, when she had the heart, and, you know, if she never would have got that heart transplant, I never would have got to know her in the Marshall Clinic, who she did most of her care through. You know, it was just, uh, it, was, it was an easy thing for me to do, and I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to do the golf. I didn't want to do, you know, the common things we do at trap shoot, and, over the years, it's become Giants and Packers, and uh, we have a bunch of guys show up. We have a good time, and we raise a lot of money for cardiac research. When is that? Like, when do you, when do you host that? It's in April. It's in April. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I should know the exact date. Um, <laughs> Let us know. We won't Put you on the you. spot here. <laughs> That's why I teamed up with the Marshall Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good point, because we do want to thank Marshfield Clinic. They helped us mm -hmm. set up this interview with yeah. you. They helped me get in contact with you. I appreciate that. No, that's, um, you know, they're great people over in development, you know, Tiffany and uh, Terry and Matt, and I'm going to forget somebody, but everybody that works for the Marshall Clinic Development Department, um, without them, the Rich Sorber Celebrity Trap Shoot never would have happened. You know, it's it, it's a lot of work to put something on at the minute that we do, and we go up to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and, uh, you know, we get a lot of people to back us, and with, without the sponsors, without um, all the volunteers, my family, you know, a lot of those people are volunteers. It's not about me. It's about maybe giving somebody else some time with their grandparents to, uh, to, to, to enjoy life. That's very cool. That's, that's awesome. So um, in 2013, you got to announce the Giants' second-round draft pick. You were, you were on stage with the NFL commissioner, um, Roger Goodell. So if you were commissioner for a day, just in a magical world, you were commissioner for a day, what changes would you make? What changes would I make? Yeah. I would protect the offensive linemen more. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we're talking about player safety with uh, the skill positions of the quarterbacks, but yet mm -hmm. me as an offensive lineman can pull up in the hole and get cut by a Mike linebacker, mm -hmm. you know, without even seeing him. Um, now, you know, football is an awesome sport. Injuries happen. Uh, what could I change? I would change. I would take over youth football. I really would. Mm -hmm. Having kids, I would be the commissioner and I would set up all these youth football programs that are run by a bunch of these weird people. And, um, and have one common youth football league for everybody in the United States and do like an NFL youth and, um, and go from there with it. Yes. Rich Cyber, thank you so much for joining us. We had a great time visiting with you. Yes, thank hey, you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Rich. Rich Cyber, our special guest, our thanks to him. We'll be back after this. When disaster strikes, water, fire, storm damage, and even mold. We take care of them all, anytime, day or night, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Quality service and customer satisfaction are top priorities. Tell your insurance company you prefer North Star Cleaning and Restoration. And remember, don't just get it clean, get it North Star Clean. NorthStarCleaning.net Hermity Financial Group strives to help you and your family reach your financial goals while demonstrating their core values of integrity, independence, and innovation. With offices in Wausau, Stevens Point, Manitowoc, and Wisconsin Rapids, proudly supports Junior Achievement, North Central District. Junior Achievement gives young people the skills they need to own their economic success. Our volunteers help students with financial literacy, work readiness, and entrepreneurship. And it's really helping me understand how it's going to be in the future. Welcome back to our final segment of Green and Gold Gridiron. It always flies by. Rich, what a really great does. guest. It's great having uh, him on. The Packers are moving on to play out west against the Raiders. This is a team that didn't have a whole lot of offense, but they beat the Denver Broncos, which demolished the Packers earlier this year. 15 to 12, yeah, I'll tell you what. That's, it's, it's a different Broncos team, but you, right. you can't sleep on this Raiders team. And I'll, I'll tell you who one of the stars of the team is a familiar name, Charles Woodson. Ah, I 39. Remember the Angelus wonder, it, I'm so happy he's doing well. Yeah. It makes me sad he's not still a Packer, but 
leads the NFL at age 39. He's been involved in 10 turnover-producing plays, five interceptions, four fumble recoveries, a forced fumble. Man, you gotta you gotta look out because he uh, he knows Aaron Rodgers, and then uh, he does. you know you gotta look out for Khalil Mack too. He had he had five sacks against Denver and uh, leads the NFL with 14. So. Two guys you got to watch out for, for sure. This was a team that trailed 12 nothing at the half and yeah. came back to win 15-12. to 12. They, they know a little about comebacks as well. Let's move into our NFL pickums. Let's bring Jenny back in and update it through there 60 games. We picked 60 games wow. so far this Exciting. year. We have and, not done uh, that well. It's still we pretty close. So the, the span is just seven games between we the three of us. Right now. <laughs> Who wants to go first this week? We're going Bears Keith hasn't at gone Minnesota. First in a while. I'll, I'll go first. Keith wants I to go first. Because like, I, I, I get accused of copying everyone's he picks. He does. He does. He does. Keith, what do you have? I have. What game am the I? The Bears. The Bears and Vikings. Minnesota. <laughs> the Bears at Minnesota. I'm taking Minnesota. I'm taking the Bears. You're taking the Bears. I'm taking I'm, the Bears. I'm taking Minnesota. The next game: Lions and the Saints. Oi, uh, Saints. <laughs> Saints. I'm going with the Saints as well, and then the Packers. We're not separating at ourselves Oakland. here. Oakland. We're not. So I Packers separated myself Packers. a little bit. You guys are, I don't so know what you guys are doing over there, but okay. we don't I'm taking so the Packers. we all have the Packers, and then yep. for our locks, Keith, what do you have? I'm taking Seattle over Cleveland, hottest team in the NFL right now. I'm also taking Jacksonville in that uh, high-scoring offense mm -hmm. against Atlanta. I'm, uh, I'm taking the Bengals over the 49ers, and then I was inspired by our guest. I'm taking the Giants over the Panthers. Wow. I was I like inspired. It, I like it. Rich inspired me of this. So you went from early in the season not taking, or you took Carolina, then you mm -hmm. went against them. Yes. So you, you've really... You change course. Really. I'm I'm just all well, over the place. You're, you're <laughs> Let's gonna, be honest. You're gonna, uh, Let's make not up pretend a lot I know what I'm talking and about. I'm going to take uh, the Patriots <laughs> over the Titans, and I'm also picking the Jacksonville Jaguars. Our uh, yes. greatest thanks to Rich yes. Seibert for joining us. What a fantastic interview from all of us here on the crew. Thanks for watching Green and Gold Gridiron. We'll see you next time.